it's your boy just dom catching the day's latest news what's going on around the rose find out here first at the tcp news break good morning and welcome back for another news break uh with tcp in the morning it's your girl lady l and i am super duper excited to introduce our guest for today's news break uh, we have CEO and founder of the Dream Exchange, Joe Sikela, and his partner, uh, William Ellison, uh, or Mr. Bill Ellison, uh, to here to talk with us today about the Dream Exchange, uh, making history first ever uh, minority owned stock exchange. Uh, so here we are just breaking barriers and making history, uh, definitely one that I hope ends up in the books, but you know, we, we all know how that goes. Uh, so let's welcome them uh, all to the morning show, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Very good, yes, glad you're having us. Uh, so um, I wanna get this conversation started just by first uh, saying thank you for uh, joining us on the morning show. And, and I just wanna know, uh, first and foremost, how does it feel to be making history? Phil? Right time, right place. <laughs> very much. I'm, I'm very excited. Many years of many years of hard work are coming true right now. So, yeah, it's, it's it, it, the feeling is overwhelming, and the response has been overwhelming. Um, you know, we've had no antagonism. People are really celebrating what we're doing. So it is very historic, and really happy to be at this time in history doing something different. That is awesome. <clears throat> So, uh, Jess, can you guys just share with us why you decided to develop the Dream Exchange? Very sure. good question. B Bill, um, why don't you start? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I am the president and chairman of Cadiz Capital. And we looked at how we can help minorities get into the mainstream of the economics of the U.S. And we looked around, as I told Joe, the only way I think minorities can do that, they have to build wealth. Uh, we all know about the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, very few minorities ever participate in there. So looking around, we found and talked with Joe and his team. And we're here came the Dream Exchange. We said this would be idea. So we put forth an effort to purchase the Dream Exchange or the largest stockholder. Therefore, finding someone like Joe that's familiar with the market, we feel that we can build uh, where minorities can participate in the stock market. And that's our hope and our ambition, to bring in small, mid-sized companies, not only minority, but specifically minority companies that can grow the wealth so they can pass to the next generation. That's our ambition. That's what we want to accomplish. But someone has to start it. I think this is the idea time to do it. And uh, Joe, you can tell them further about our arrangement. Yeah, well, I've been working on this for um, much more than a decade. Um, you know, my background led me to doing this. I was a, a lawyer <clears throat> and a CPA, and I was involved in the first ever uh, electronic stock exchange uh, more than 20 years ago. So I have this uh, kind of obscure knowledge of how a stock exchange is formed. And it's not something that the American public generally thinks about. Most of what the American people think about is, is uh, stock brokers. So how can I raise money? They go to a stockbroker and the largest ones, you know, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs, these very, very big, they're brokerages or, or sometimes called investment banks. And, and really the importance of what we're doing, and this has been my mission for a very long time, is to, to bring the availability of a marketplace. See, the stock exchange is the marketplace. It's not merely that you found someone who's interested in your company and they invest in your company. It's the marketplace where everyone has an opportunity then to invest in your company. And um, what we've, what we discovered through really years of research, and I can tell you the origin where I started uh, realizing that, I mean, for a very long time, I've known that small companies just had a very difficult time, but specifically where I got involved with minority companies was, you know, 10 years ago, we were working with the Chicago Urban League's entrepreneur program. And I found it very difficult to help those companies to raise money. 
So I was always going to the stockbroker or going to the intermediary, someone to help find money. And I, and I really realized, well, there's a marketplace. The stock marketplace has no minority participation. Um, and as I developed the dream exchange, I realized there are a lot of false notions that we're just dispelling, we're, we're getting rid of. And, that, and those false notions really kept the entire educational process and the information and what Bill's entire life has been dedicated to, which is, you know, he's built many, many good companies. And when you build a good company, it provides economic opportunity for not only the business owner, but the people who work there. And they can own a part of the company and you can have employee stock ownership and all the entrepreneurs who become vastly wealthy um, in this country have really begun, you know, Steve Jobs started in his garage. So we want to take those opportunities and bring them to the people that are uh, in their proverbial garage, but doing it with the attention on outstanding people. The, the, the entrepreneurship program at the Chicago Urban League had the most amazing people with brilliant ideas, brilliant. And we still have some of those people we're working with where, you know, um, organic food products distribution companies, uh, you know, environmental waste remediation companies. This wasn't just your, the, the corner store. These were people with extremely brilliant ideas, um, people of color. So what we, what we really dedicated ourselves to is making this, as broad an audience as possible. That's where the idea has come from, my experience, as well as my personal experience. And I guess I, to sum it up, it's a, more about the people I haven't been able to help all these years. And now we want to create opportunity to, to help all those folks participate in the marketplace and really become a part of the fabric of, of wealth and prosperity in the country. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so then how could, or how can businesses that are interested in being listed, how can, can they get listed or uh, get their business out there? So once uh, the dream exchange comes out, they're already in place. Right. Perfect question. So we're not open yet. Uh, we don't have a license to be a stock exchange yet. We're in that process. Um, well, we're, we're actually a little bit even before that. We'll have to file our documents with the government and move through the application process. But what can they do now? So right now, we're running a, an educational program as well as something called DreamX Connect, which you don't need a stock exchange license for. And small businesses can go to a free website and they can enter all of their data and profile into DreamX Connect, and there are willing and able investors and, and investment funds that will share almost like a LinkedIn or a Facebook for companies and investors where they can then communicate. We have a message board, that, and when they're able to connect and get access to one another, well, then they can go even today, like next week, if they go to DreamX Connect and there's interested investors they'll be able to make an arrangement to get money outside of, of our system. Now, in the future, those investors and companies will go through the system when we're licensed. But we're immediately beginning to open up. We've, we have several hundred companies in there. Already, we have hundreds of investors in there, interested investors in DreamX Connect as we speak. So today, what we're doing is promoting both give us your information, and I think what's important, and Bill can speak to this uh, really well, we want to educate them through the DreamX Connect process so they understand, well, what do I need in my company? What, what are the things that investors and the marketplace is looking for? What are the rules? How do I establish myself in my company so that I can qualify to someday be a candidate and be on a stock exchange? So we're starting at very small companies. This is a daunting task. Um, and, and some of them larger, uh, especially this, I think Bill speaks to this really well about opportunity. So the, the, what they can do now is DreamX Connect, but in, as they progress, we're going to blow the barriers down of the very problems Bill has encountered throughout his, he's got an extraordinary career. He's just a very wise businessman. I'm so proud to be his partner. Um, and Bill, I don't know if you want to address, well, you know, what, what they can uh, do. Let's look at this. But what I've been telling people, this is almost like the second Black Wall Street. 
Uh, you might remember the first one was in Oklahoma. Here's an opportunity that we want to take minority to another plateau, another step, thereby having companies that can build wealth and pass it to the next generation. A lot of people are not aware of the fact that if you have capital and have stock in a public company, that stock becomes capital as well. So if you combine cash with stock, you can buy a larger company than you presently have. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for an opportunity to help minorities to build for the next generation. This is something that we can see in the future. But we have to start, we have to have a starting point, and now is the time. And I just wanted to echo what Joe said. Uh, two other black gentlemen and myself bought a $400 million company in St. Louis, a TAPCO. But we had to put it together. And too bad Dream ex, uh, Exchange was not existent at that time because we could have used something like the Dream Exchange. We had to go to the public market, and it was not uh, easy to raise the capital, but we did raise the capital. We bought the company, thereby having 2,000 employees. And there again, minorities, if they can buy companies, build companies, they can hire more and more people. And that's what we're looking for. It's something that we all can visualize, but we have to have a starting point, and we feel this is the starting point for all of us. A lot of people say, well, why did you get with Joe? I don't know too many other minorities that understand the stock market. Joe understands the stock market. So that's why Joe has helped in this teamwork that we have and doing this together. So go ahead. So I, I do have a question. Uh, so for businesses that are a little bit uh, further along uh, and more comfortable with their uh, economics, uh, what about the idea of them getting loans from the European market or other markets abroad uh, to help get capital and fund their business ventures uh, versus going into the stock market? So, so currently, there's a, there's a way of raising money internationally. And here's what you have to understand. The public markets of the United States meaning that any individual in the whole country, doesn't matter from what walk of life, once a company files information with the Securities Exchange Commission, they can offer those shares, most of the time through a stock brokerage, to the general investing public, to everyone. If you don't file registration documents with the Securities Exchange Commission, you have to find a way to be exempt. You have to find a way the, the law, actually, the 1933 Securities Act says you can't buy and sell shares, period. Now, so it's done every day, right? So how is it done? Well, it's either done through a re public registration or being exempt from that. Now, one of the ways that you're describing is through international investors or international markets. And you have to, fi you have to fill out all the paperwork to be qualified. It's called Regulation S. And the investors and the company can then meet and they can receive those funds and they're exempt from all the filings of the system. There's one problem with that. Once they're exempt, if they want to have the general American investing public, the power of the American investing public participate, then they have to go and register and they need a stock exchange. So even if we go to the international markets, um, and one of the things I'm not, I'm not necessarily a, an enemy of, but I, I certainly do realize that a conventional solution has always been to borrow the money, borrow the money, borrow the money. And there are many, many international loan funds uh, that, that if, if they're a mature business that are eligible. But once again, it's not equity. It's not that they've received the, an investor who believes in the company. Now they have to believe in them enough to give them a loan. But at the end of the day, all loan transactions require a, a, a payment stream that can be very, very difficult, especially if the company's trying to grow. Now, and, and one of the things, and I don't want to steal the thunder of loans because uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different marketplace. It's still a good marketplace. But what Bill is talking about, what we're trying to create is equity. The equity of other people sharing in the ownership of the company where they can be patient. You know, Tesla Motors is the world's largest automobile company. And uh, the first time they ever made a profit was last quarter. So for years and years and years, why did people keep buying their stock? Well, 
because they kept expanding. They kept meeting the creative milestones. And if you have investors who invest equity, they can patiently wait. And you don't have the, oh, the loan payment is due. We better sell something or we better make sure that we become short-sighted about the long-term vision because if we don't make the loan payment, we're in a lot of trouble. Now, that, and that's a perfectly workable marketplace. I'm not against borrowing money outright. But the smaller companies, even the company, Bill has a story about a company he tried to buy, and he, had he had more equity, he could have bought a division of a major U.S. company, but he couldn't buy it because the borrowed funds wouldn't let the deal work. Bill, you can actually talk about that to, to some degree. Yes. Uh, yeah. It was a um, Gillette owned a company that owns a fountain pen. I like fountain pens. But that was, uh, they owned the Parker and the Waterman and the paper made. And uh, all of my advisors, after we looked at the books and gone through everything, it said they could support 600 million. Uh, we put a bid in at 600 million. Uh, another company, Newell Rubbermaid came in, put a bid in for 650 million. But the numbers only indicate the cash flow could only support the 600 million. So they won the bid and six months later, the president of that division lost his job. In less than nine months, the chairman of the board lost his job. They overpaid for a company and could not cash flow it, could not pay for itself. So we say there's nothing wrong in borrowing money. Loans are good, but you want equity. And that's what we're trying to encourage small minority business is to build up equity. By being in a stock market, you're building up equity along with cash or loans, you can buy something bigger. So we're trying to expose minority to the real world, the world that they have never seen. I never saw this world until some people actually showed me and taught me how this world exists. It's another world out there. Now it's time for minority to get familiar with that world and how they can use it to their advantage. So how many businesses do you hope to have uh, participating uh, by the time you guys open up? And then how many investors do you guys have currently interested in supporting uh, your movement? Well, if the last three weeks is any, any indicate to know what the potential is, is tremendous, believe me. It's unreal what has happened in the last three weeks, last three to four weeks. There's so much interest in this. And Joe, you can give her some details. Yeah, let me give you some of the numbers. Um, you know, and I did not, we really hit... Uh, the vein here. We really did hit a needed thing in our society because I originally thought, great, I love my partners. We're going to do this. We'll have some news stories. It'll go away in a week and we'll go back to work. Um, in the last 14 days, we've had a million people to our website. Um, we have thousands of companies, thousands of interested companies that want to come to the Dream Exchange in the future to be listed. We, we currently have close to, every day the numbers go up. By last count, I think we were at 400 companies in DreamX Connect, many minority companies, and I can tell you their products are amazing. Um, the, the numbers of investors, the interested investors, one of the biggest problems I have right now is we're a small team. I only have, we only have 14 people establishing this right now, right? Um, we have so many investor inquiries for people who, uh, want to invest in the companies on the exchange that I've had to set up. I took two of the staff just to handle several thousand inquiries in the last week. Wow. And, and, and a lot of it is educational. For example, um, you know, what is the difference between a retail and an accredited investor? How do funds work? How will all that work? Well, we're teaching the mechanics so that everyone can participate. But um, to open my original projections was, I needed 40 companies to open the doors. Uh, with this new inflow and uh, kind of a new direction of our business plan, um, I, would, I would very much to, like to see somewhere between two and 300 companies, we're not precise, but I think we, we're gonna be able to open with immediately eligible, really qualified good companies in the neighborhood of two to 300. Now, mind you, there are only about 3,000 3, companies on stock exchanges in the United States today. So when we open, we could have 10% of what it currently exists. And I, I plan to have thousands. The answer is we want thousands of companies to participate 
And if we use technology and we use the availability of all the financial technology available to us today, we can really open a marketplace that will be safe for investors. That's a primary goal is investor protection. Yeah. Um, but also to, to really get into the weeds with these smaller companies and train them so that they can participate in the market. So yes, it's a, it's a, it's going to be huge, much bigger than we originally anticipated. Yeah, and that's, that's definitely a great loan game is giving people the tools to maintain and letting them know what they're getting into so that they can be educated and not fall to, you know, any kind of predatory issues or things that may come about. Um, I know that there are issues with like penny stocks and things of that sort. Uh, so really giving people the rundown on, as you said, the mechanics of how this will all work. I yeah, think that's our, awesome. Our research area has actually been providing a consistent amount of research documentation to, to end the abuses in the penny stock area for, for a long time. We, we delivered, our, the, the head of our uh, research area is a professor at the University of Wisconsin, and he was a scholar in resident, residence at the Securities Exchange Commission who address this particular area, the economics of the smaller capital markets. So our, we're designing the rules of our exchange to eliminate those abuses and, and make rules so that, that those uh, problems won't exist in our market, while also freeing it up because just because something bad might happen doesn't mean you can't fashion a good rule to protect against it happening and still get capital into the hands of, of the small company. Awesome. And I, I know that uh, sometimes rumors can have a, an impact on whether stocks do good or bad. Um, how do you guys hope to use the, the, the good publicity and information that's out there to help drive more business interest and more uh, interest uh, in the educational component in the webinars uh, so that people can learn and grow as you guys are growing so that they can be ready? <laughs> yeah, one, one of the things we're doing um so this this is something i can disclose um I, I can't publish the rules until i publish them that's one of the problems with some of the questions but one of the things we noticed in our research was exactly what you just said um if it weren't for bad news most small companies would have no news at all because you know oh we tried and the prototype didn't work or we were trying exactly what i said by tesla spacex failed three times to to get their first launch right so it was bad news. So in the small company setting, we're designing a rule that allows for the periodic update of the investor market. But one of the things that is a predatory thing that has happened in the past is um, stock speculators will use the bad news to short the stock, what they, what they call shorting the stock. So there will be certain levels of company participation where the availability to use a short sale will be prohibited. Okay. In other words, if we stop the short selling of a small company stock because they're still small and they, they need to get through their trials. Actually, I have a, I have a minority owned company that had a medical technology, this is going back 10 years. And um, you know, they had a very difficult time getting through their FDA approval process. It took a very long time. But the news was never really bad, it just took longer. So what we're doing is saying, look, in spite of that bad news, the market participants, the investors, can't take advantage of it. So we have specialized rules that are gonna go in our rule book for the very small company to protect the investor and protect the company when the news isn't so good. But it, it, you know, not, not you know, waste, fraud, or abuse, you know, those are different topics. Sometimes a company just doesn't make its target. It doesn't make its goal in time. Well, that's perfectly legitimate. It, you know, it, my 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 family and old saying: it's not soup till it's soup. So let them let them make their meal. Let them create and give them the equity and the capital and the patient money to see the development take place. So we're designing what we're doing specifically to address these types of problems. And I also will echo the fact that by having honest information going out, so the public fully understand what we're doing, we think the public will respond. And we're gonna have an open door policy that anytime there's a question, there will be answers to those questions. 
That's fantastic, gentlemen. Uh, are there any final thoughts, any last words that you would want to share before we close out this interview? Bill, you, you have another thought? I mean, I have, I, this is what I do every day. I've been doing it for, for many, many years. Uh, when my eyes open in the morning, it's the dream exchange. When they go to sleep at night and they close, I dream about the dream exchange um, because it, it is a, it's a labor of love. Uh, the, my final comment is, I think that Bill and I and our groups are a model of partnership. The, the beautiful thing that's actually happening behind the scenes is um, we're really good partners. We actually really care for one another and our families and our and and that's something that I think just by setting that example to the world as how we can work together to create economic prosperity. And and my final comment really is. It, it, public markets create jobs. Um, there's a statistic that 92% of all jobs are created after a company goes public. So if you think about what Bill said, he had a 2,000 person company. Had he been able to go to the public markets, he could have created 20,000 jobs. And the fact that there's only been one company ever, black owned company ever traded on the New York Stock Exchange, well, where are our economic empowerment opportunities in those companies? Well, it's not hard to figure the math out. If there's no public companies, there's 20,000 jobs missing because Bill Ellison wasn't able to access the public market so long ago. And we need to create the captains of industry who will really sincerely look at helping our, our society and make, it a, make, make this world a better place. I'm proud to be yeah, partners I with Bill to do that. I would add the fact that we have a staff of people that is tremendous. They're very, very brilliant. Uh, and these people are the ones that really are helping us to develop this and putting this out in a form that everybody can understand. And our hats are off to these people. These are dedicated people, been working long hours, and they have really ability beyond Joe's and my uh, ability. And it's interesting to see how they are developing and bringing these uh, thoughts and ideas and putting them together. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you gentlemen for joining us uh, this morning on the TCP Newsbreak. Guys, you can learn more information at dreamex.com. Uh, again, that is dreamex.com. You can see the link down there on the bottom of the screen. Uh, all right, so stay tuned for Tea with Toy, uh, Corona Chronicles and Conversations with Lady L.